Hello everybody. In this video, you're going to see how to create a username and password uh, sort of system to implement into your apps. Uh, in a lot of my tutorial videos, I've explained how to make that username and password, but it's a little confuzzled with uh, a lot of other things and it can get really confusing at that point. But in this video, we'll just be showing you how to exactly create the username and password only. So uh, with the going to the design tab, uh, it's a good idea to change the ID screen name to something. Like I usually name it menu, uh, some are portal or title screen or so on, but I'm just gonna name it menu. And I'm gonna grab two text inputs. Actually, I'm gonna change the theme right here. I prefer classic, but it doesn't have to be, the theme doesn't exactly matter when you're creating the username and password system. Okay, you should have two text inputs. Uh, the first placeholder should be username to enter what your username is and to add password as your placeholder. Now that we have that, it's a good idea to change the IDs for each one. So this one's gonna be called user as the ID and the other one's going to be called pass. Of course, you don't have to name it like that. The IDs are different. Uh, they can be different uh, to however you want, but we'll just name it user and pass for simplicity's sake. I'll go ahead and grab a button right here and put it right there. And I'm just going to do login. Also, I'm going to grab a text label and I'm going to put that in the middle of our uh, between the button and the text inputs. I'll do the text alignment to center and I'll get rid of anything inside the text. And the ID for that one's just gonna be called status one because that will say whether it's an incorrect username or password and, or it will just say it logged in. Uh, now with that text input and we have those, uh, I like to sort of make it more cleaner, uh, more centered, really. So what I like to do is grab a button and resizing it to, let's say, the left side. And I'll go to the right side. I can see right here that the username is centered. Same with the password. It's centered on the screen. And the text label should be fine. I can see, though, that the bottom is a little uh, too small. So I'll just move it up a little, and I'll move the login. Now the login button I'm noticing right now is not centered at all. So I can either resize it or I can, I can just keep moving it until it fits. Uh, let's see, you know, I'll just make it that big for now. And as we can see here, it fits the button. Oop. There you go. All right. Uh, as always with the designing part of your login. Uh, it's kind of nice to have a border radius. I prefer five pixels, uh, just so it's not sharp corners. There you go. And you can always change the color of it. I prefer just black and white. And I'll keep the background color the same. Okay. So right after that, we'll actually go to the data, uh, data browser. And on the table name, we'll just type in accounts. On the accounts, usually we'll do username or user. I'll do username for now as the first column. And I'll add another column by clicking the plus button and entering password. Okay. So now that we have that, we can, we'll keep that the same for now. So usually when you are trying to read records uh, or read something with the data on your app, sort of can't detect whether this is an actual uh, actual data table because there's actually nothing in here. So it just identifies it as like, it's nothing, it doesn't exist. But if I add a row right here without entering anything on the text, it'll just say undefined, meaning that we didn't add anything on the text. It doesn't know what it is, but we did add a data row, uh, which is, this is our first ID. So right here, uh, basically, now your code will be able to detect whether it's a data table or not. But right now, we just said it is a data table. All right. 
So I'll go ahead to code and I'll grab an on event. This will be our first line of code. So the ID for this one is button one. I should also add that you don't have to make it a button. It can also be an image. But right here on our on event button one, I'll go ahead and go to data. I'll grab a read records and put that inside here. And let's keep everything here for now. This one's going to be called accounts. And let's see if I, nope, I didn't capitalize that. Okay. Uh, now we'll go to control. I'll grab an if else statement and I'll put it inside of the for variable i equals zero and so on. Inside that white space for the if, I'll grab an equality operator, put that inside of the if statement. And I'll go ahead and uh, right here on the records i dot id, it's always a good idea to hold it from the corner and put it on the right side of the equality operator. Uh, don't hold it right here on the records i dot name because it'll only just grab that records i and not the the name dot name part. So on the left side right here, I'll go to UI controls and grab a get text. That one is going to be user as the ID. Okay, grab that. There we go. And that one's just going to be called username. Okay, and keep that else there for now. I'll go back to control. I'll grab another if else statement and we're sort of going to replicate this. Go have an equality operator. I'll grab the records I dot name, put it on the right side. That one's going to say password though. Go to UI controls, grab a get text, and that one should be pass as the ID for this text input. And we can just get rid of this console.log since we have already placed those. Those are the most crucial parts in your code. I'll go ahead and back to design. I'll grab a new screen and this one's going to say uh, login. Uh, login portal for now. And we'll just add a little text label. You don't have to add this. This is just basically going to say that you logged in successfully. Go back to menu. And on the else part, I'm going to grab a set text and we'll not add one to the top yet, but uh, the set text ID is going to be status one, which should be right here in the middle. And the text for that is going to say incorrect username or password. Actually, okay, so why not just incorrect username? Well, really, if you're typing in incorrect username, then it's basically going to tell you that it's the account doesn't exist. Or if we say incorrect password, the reason people would say incorrect username or password is because we don't want people to continue pressing the login button constantly trying to find out what the password is or what the username is. Uh, that's like a form of spam. And we don't want people to sort of keep constantly pressing it. The server is going to keep getting requests from the client and it's just going to be a mess from there. So we just want to make it a little more secure by giving a vague answer uh, for the user. So with that incorrect username or password, I'll go to control, I'll grab a set timeout and put it under the set text. I'll do 3000 milliseconds. Uh, 3000 milliseconds is three seconds, or I could do 5000 milliseconds. And I'll grab, or I'll go to the UI controls. I'll grab a set text, status one, and there's gonna be nothing inside that text, but we wanna add those two double quotes. Okay, now that we have that, uh, we need to put this one onto the else area, but we don't want to sort of type it in manually. So I'll just go ahead and highlight all of this by holding my left cursor uh, or the left key, uh, button on my mouse. And I'll just hold it so only these three lines of code are inside. I'll do control C and using my arrow keys, I'll just go up, 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 and you can see that there's like a black part bleaking uh, right here on the bottom of the else. I'll just do control V and it just pastes that all there. Okay. So with that user into the pass, uh, now we can go ahead and go to the UI controls, grab a set screen and go to login portal. Okay. 
So I'll go back to data and I'll create an account. So it's important that you add the two double quotes because if you don't, your code or your the data browser will automatically identify it as a number. And we don't really want our account to just be a number. So we'll add those two double quotes indicating that it's text. I'll just do test and I'll add the two double quotes again. And that one will be pass. All right. So I'll do test on the username part and then pass login. And it says you logged in successfully. If I have test, but it's a different password, it'll say incorrect username. You'll notice that it's actually cut off also. So you can actually either change the font size so it's a little smaller or, and it's a nice way to type in incorrect username or password right here. Uh, but you can also just resize it so it's filling up the whole screen. And you can just take out any example text that you added. But make sure you still have that status in one part. So I have the test and pass. And if I do tree and then tree again, basically it doesn't work or log in successfully. All right. Okay. So we're not sort of done yet. We want to make a way where uh, it'll save the username and password uh, for as uh, throughout your app. We don't want to keep relying on these text inputs. So what I'm going to do is go to variables and I'm going to do something called a global variable. So I'll grab a declare variable right here. Grab two of those and that one's going to say username and this one's going to say password right here. And I'll grab the assign a variable and put it inside of the set uh, or inside of our on event button one right here on top of uh, the set screen login portal. And on the X side, I'll just type in username. The other side is going to be password. And on the UI controls, I'll grab a get text or two get text actually, and put it on the right side of those variables. Now, the first ID is going to be user, and the second ID is going to be pass, because we're grabbing the user and pass uh, IDs. All right, now I'll grab two set texts and put that under those variables, but on top of the set screen. And I'll do user and pass again. But inside those texts, it's actually not going to say anything. We want to clear those text inputs because if let's say you wanted to log out from your account, then the other user wouldn't be able to see the username or password lab uh, inputs, which should avoid any hacking of some sorts. Okay, so we added the user and we added the pass. Great. And I can safely log in. And there we go. It's also a good idea to go onto variables. I'll grab another assign a variable. I'll put it under here. This one's going to be called ID. And you can follow along with me on here. Uh, we'll do an opening parentheses and then records, opening bracket, the letter I or lowercase I, closing bracket, closing parentheses, and then a period or a dot and a ID. And you can just press enter and it automatically makes the same thing that we made here. Uh, if you don't feel like typing it, you can also grab the read records uh, from the data toolbox and just easily just grab it from there like that. Now, uh, why do we want to grab the ID? Well, for example, if you're using the update records uh, from your data toolbox, you will actually have to create this whole thing. So you'll do ID and then username and password. If you left out e password right here, and just put username, for example, to update your record, let's say you want to up, update your password, for example, then it automatically deletes the password and pretends it didn't exist. Uh, that's why with the update records, we want to add these variables just to make it more easier. And it you with global variables, we can use it throughout the app. So we can put, let's say, when you're logging into an account, welcome, and then the username of that account holder. 
In the next videos, uh, I'll show you how to create your own account, uh, how to create your own account through the app. And also we'll go over global and local variables very soon.